Um, they're relatively straightforward and simple. So it's basically your um, shift your weight forward a little bit. So your weight is more on your hands. And then again, you keep your trunk still and you shift your weight back. But you need to feel how far back you can go. Because I will tell you, as people who feel things, that you go until your weight is on your heels. If you go beyond that, you're going to um, lose your balance because you don't have a stepping strategy or anything. So they need to feel where their center of gravity is halfway between their heels and their um, the balls of their feet because they're not going to go onto their toes. Okay. Heels and balls of the feet and when you find that center of gravity, then you can lift one arm up and lift the other arm up. You lift one arm up, you lift the other arm up. And then when you get um, reasonably good with that, you're going to lift both arms up. Now, we're not talking about up here. We're talking about just a little bit. Okay. Once you can do that, so we're doing basically a frontal plane, then you keep your trunk still and you move one arm forward and one arm back. So now you're introducing some rotary force and then the other arm forward and back. And so you're here, you go one, two, back to the middle, two, back to the middle. When you're getting better, it's one here, one here, and back and back. So it's like a four point gait. Okay? And then when as you're getting better, then you're going to um, lean forward and both arms go forward and then both arms come back. Both arms go forward. But when your arms go back, you can't be back like that. Okay? You have to maintain your lodotic posture. Once you can do those things reasonably, then you can start um, actually doing push-ups, okay? So um, then what you'll do is put your weight on your arms, and in this case, it's pretty good that the bars are a little bit high, and then you do push-up and then come down. And that's, that in itself is a strengthening exercise, okay? Um, once you can do some push-ups, now you also have to be aware of when you do a push-up, will your feet land in the same place each time? So if I do a push-up and I look up at the same time, where are my feet going to land? Oh, ahead of me. Okay, so if I do a push-up and do that, my feet are going to land ahead of me. Or if I do a push-up and look down, they're going to go behind me. So that's why it's really good to start this in the parallel bar so the person gets the idea of pushing up and whatever they come down with, um, they uh, feel where their center of gravity is. There are some people who get so good at this that they can just balance really like this and they're using basically their head, neck, and upper trunk to balance. It's kind of like walking on a tightrope when you can't feel the tightrope. Okay, so once they have gone through this, then you can start um, ambulation training or gait training. And the first thing, <coughs> the first gait pattern is called a drag towards gait. Okay, so uh, I'm going to back up a little bit. <coughs> so drag towards gait is your feet don't leave the ground, they just slide along the ground. And so you put your hands in a comfortable position to the front, put your weight on your hands, do a little push up, and just <coughs> slide your feet. Now, my weight is now on my arms and the balls of my feet. I can't just pick up my arms and bring it forward. What I need to do is I need to shift my weight back onto my feet, so I can move my arms forward and then drag. Okay, my weight is now front of my center of gravity on the balls of my feet. 
I shift my weight back so I balance and slide my hands forward. So that would be a drag towards gait. It's just a slide. Okay. But you can see this rhythm that develops. Okay? So that is a um, drag towards gait. Now, if I want to turn around, what I'm going to do is push up, turn my head towards where I'm going. And so if I turn my head to the left, <coughs> my hips are going to turn around. So I'm going to start out in uh, an offset position. Okay, do a push up, turn my head to the left, and the body is going to go where the head goes because the body is all one piece. It doesn't break in the middle. So there's no head hip relationship with that. Okay. Here, and then turn. Okay. So I'm coming back to this way <coughs> just so I can see you better. The second one, if you look in the books, is called a swing through, uh, sorry, um, a swing to gait. Now, in all the books, it's called a swing to gait. If you teach them to swing to, you're going to make them fall. Because what did you learn? What was the first rule of crutch walking? What do you never do? Have everything in a straight line. Have everything in a straight line. You're always in a triangle. So you do this or you do that. Okay. I don't know why with paraplegics they decided to call it a swing two because that would mean that I put my hands here, put my weight on my hands, I bring my legs up, and I come two. And in this situation, it's a surefire fall. So a so I I renamed it to a swing towards. Okay, it's a sofa renaming. Okay, <laughs> hands here, and it's the same as a drag, except that you get your legs up off the ground a little bit, and then you shift back, so you you can weight your hands. Okay, and then you shift back to unweight your hands. And that would be a swing towards. Yes? So when you're leaning forward and you're lifting yourself up, wouldn't the momentum bring your legs maybe further than you wanted it to be? Uh, well, that's why you, you don't do the next step, which is um, using your head to bring your legs through. Okay, so <coughs> that's why your head is basically still with this one. Um, the third gate is a swing through gait. And that's the equivalent of one of your gates like this. Okay, so your heels land in front of your arms. Okay, but <coughs> if you're using crutches and you have a cast or an ace bandage or something, when your heel lands in front of your arms, doesn't matter what position your hip is in because you have hip extensors and back extensors. Um, but with your <coughs> Paraplegic, your swing through gait is your hands. Okay, now here's where you have to use your head to bring the legs forward. Okay, as soon as you um, as soon as you put your weight on your hands and you push up, you look up. Now the look up is not a full neck extension, it's just looking up just enough to get your legs in front, okay? So you start out kind of looking down, put your weight on, look up. Now, here's what happens. You see where my, see I landed on my heels because I have plantar flexion stop, I can't do this, okay? Now here, I have to maintain that lordosis, come through, and then start it again. Look down a little bit, up, come through, okay? Um, <clears throat> almost all of you will be doing something like this, <laughs> pushing off with your plantar flexors. When you do this, because we'll be doing this with crutches, um, you need to uh, do, you need to maintain isometric contraction of your anterior tips and your quads and your glutes, okay? Now, if I need to sit down, what uh, you 
as the therapist, when I got up, should have made a mental mark on the ground as to where my heels landed, because that's where I have to make my turn. So if I'm going to sit down there, okay, I'm going to come around like so. Okay. And then I'm going to lean to one side because I have to unlock my hips, not my knees. Okay. Unlock one hip, shift, maintain, I'm more about it. Unlock, unlock the other hip. Now, if I look down, my hips are going to bend. Okay. So what I do is put my, keep my head in extension, keep my hands all the way back. And then when I'm ready, I tuck my chin and come into the chair. Okay. And then I come down, push, unlock, unlock, and then 